This is Rinda by Gabriella, Sch Gabriella Schneck. We have Amanda, a teenager visiting her grandfather in Ireland. Originally, she was an upbeat, kind of person, but the death of her parents has turned her into a shell of her former self. She is now sad and tired. She's supposed to be young, not over the age of 18, but older than 12. O'Connor, Amanda's grandfather, superstitious and ever so slightly crazy, old but wise and sharp with his tongue. And Sporat, Sporat? Sporat. Sporat. An Irish nature spirit that lives in the wild, the same age range as Amanda. Although feared by O'Connor, he's not actually dangerous. In fact, he's lonely, a little sarcastic, but kind and understanding. Scene one. At rise, O'Connor is tending to a small pot of plant outside of the hut. He stoops over with age and walks with a slight limp. He whistles to himself as he works. Amanda walks on stage, clutching a suitcase. She's not smiling, but instead looks around nervously. O'Connor glances at her. Hey, Maria. Maria. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not. O'Connor frowns and hobbles to her, scratching his chin, he pulls at her hair. Maybe yelps. Hey, 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 don't, don't do that. Leave me alone. I'm just a young one. What are you yelling at anyway? I'm your own flesh and blood. Don't you see him? It's me. Grandpa O'Connor? <laughs> <laughs> you both had a scare, didn't we? Now. <laughs> Goodness, I... Didn't recognize you at all. I guess I've been away longer than I thought. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? I, uh, I knew you were coming, but I didn't expect it to be so soon. Pardon these old eyes. I just haven't seen you since you were this, this dog. He kneels and lifts his hands some way off the ground, and then smiles tenderly. It's hard to believe that I was ever that small, Grandpa. It's the truth. So, <coughs> nice here. Be here for a while, I'm sure you know. Thanks for letting me stay. I am. Um, why don't you come inside? It's getting cold out here. Besides, you don't want to meet up with the banshee now, do you? Oh, uh, what? Looks like we're going to have a little lesson then. Aren't they pretending, Grandpa? That's what I've heard lately. O'Connor grabs her arm gently. Let's not talk about this. Not right now. You're probably tired after. It has been a long trip that came out of a nightmare. <coughs> she chuckles and smiles brightly. It wasn't any worse than the first plane ride. I remember I was super fussy and poor mom had She breaks off with a small hiccup noise and gently presses her hand against her mouth. The suitcase quivers in her grasp. O'Connor quickly takes the suitcase away and places a hand around Amanda's shoulders. She should be hesitant as if he isn't sure if he's comforting her or making things worse. <coughs> Come inside! Come inside! These, these, these winds can be unforgiving. <laughs> you should find rest for your weariness indoors. Besides, trees have eyes. A wolf howls. Amanda looks frightened, but O'Connor simply guides her off stage. Wolves aren't the kind of thing to worry about here. <laughs> okay, Grandpa, whatever you say. Scene two. At rise, Amanda is seated alone at the table. There is a picture frame in her hand. She sighs to herself and wipes her nose. O'Connor walks in. Maria. That was my mother's name. Maria. You called me Maria when you first saw me. Is there a reason for that? And these old eyes. What? Mine. Mine. There wasn't what it used to be. I forget. I live in my past. You thought I was my mother? Yes. You look a lot like she did at your age. Amanda puts the picture down and stares out the window. I miss them. I know, Lassie. I keep glancing down that path, expecting your mother's smiling face as she runs to greet me. I keep expecting to feel a pinch on my cheek whenever I feel sad. Daddy always told me to keep my spirits up. I remember coming here as a child. Everything seemed so magical, so unreal. As a child? You're still a child! I had to grow up quickly. But you still find this magical, don't you? Just like you did when you were just a little thing. Why does it matter? It's not like any of that crap I thought was real. O'Connor opens his mouth to say something, but thinks better of it. I don't think your mother would have liked to, would like you to forget to live. I'm forgetting. I'm simply thinking another way now. It's funny how life changes when things happen. They love you. You know that. That didn't keep them from dying. 
Child, if you think that way, nothing is ever going to make you feel happy again. Vanda's not angry. She is simply weary. I won't be happy. It's the least I can do. My parents were my everything. My everything. Look. He sits next to Amanda at the table and takes her hands into his. I, I know this is a hard time for you. You've lost your parents. I've lost a daughter and a son. Why don't you and I just muddle through this together? Angry, Amanda gets up and walks away. O'Connor sighs and walks off in the other direction. Scene three. At rise, O'Connor seated on the porch, rocking back and forth. It is morning. Amanda enters with a glass of water. She smiles at O'Connor and hands him the glass. Ah, thank you, Lassie. You said you wanted to talk to me? I did. Yes? Just now, after you asked me for a glass of water? Ah! ah yes! Yes, I did! <laughs> Forgetful of mine. Yes. What was it you wanted? Are the trees beautiful? And the ocean? Yes, I guess they are. The sea and the forest have been here for as long as I can remember. A balance between the two. A perfect harmony. A harmony? Harmony. Yes, indeed. Harmony between all things living. A magic that has seemed to the beauty of nature. Every time you say magic, I imagine a little leprechaun sleeping through the heather. That's upset. I know. There's more than just leprechauns in the heather. Amanda frowns, shifting to look at her grandfather. Grandpa, you don't actually believe in magic, do you? Unlike the stubborn young lassie that I know, I choose, I choose to live, to let this place of beauty sing its secrets to me. As children grow, they lose the ability to see the wonderful things in front of their eyes. Adults are so stiff, so practical. They forget to live in their imaginations and so The door to magic closes. Grandpa, are you feeling all right? <laughs> what you said was true. You've had to grow quickly. And I was hoping that coming back here would make you feel like a child again. I can't go back to being a child, not with what happened. Well, I can be child enough for the both of us. <laughs> what kind of magic? Could you raise the urge, could you? Do you have any stories? Oh, there are stories. Many stories, just like there are many creatures. What about a banshee? Of course, it's a wonderful place to start. What is it? Some say it's a ghost of a woman. A spirit that warns untimely death with her way. Why do you warn me about one anyways? Strange things happen in the woods. Are you telling me that there are banshees in the woods, Grandpa? Perhaps. At night, anyway. Grandpa, I really don't like to be messed with. There's also selkies in the sea. Grandpa! <laughs> <laughs> Men and women who take the form of seals. <laughs> Tell me, is there a more magical place here? Grandpa. <laughs> in the woods? Water, horses? <laughs> Vampires. Vampires. <laughs> oh, yes. Vampires. Ghosts and goblins. Dark riders. You're not going to give me nightmares. I'm sorry, Lassie. I just thought you should know why. Are you trying to scare me? I'm not. Uh, you have to be prepared for these parties in the city. I know. I'll be fine. I won't let any wolves get to me. It's not the wolves you have to worry about. Grandpa, I'm not a little kid anymore. I know what's real and what's not. You're not fooling anyone. Hmm. Suit yourself. Of course, your mother was always interested in these sort of things. What was my mother like? What? When she was a little kid, what was she like? Oh, uh, Maria was always full of life. Always asking questions. Always bubbling young. Was she brave? 
Well, yes, I guess so. She would wander off on her own after dark, if that's what you mean. She wasn't afraid to dive right to the ocean, or touch spiders, or even climb one of those trees. Yes, she was brave. And when she packed up her belongings and went off to places unknown, <laughs> no, that took bravery as well. Her new life was very different from what she had before. Your father helped her some, I assume. Yeah. We're going to fast forward a little bit. Fast forward. Um, so that we can meet the Um So can you go to page 15? Ooh, and we're just going to meet the for a little bit. So that we can... <clears throat> Got it. Um, from where? The top. Scene four. Oh, okay. At rise, Amanda seated in the middle of a clearing in the forest. Her face is in her knees miserably. Oh, am I kidding? I'm not brave. I can't walk through the woods without getting lost. I'm a total failure. <laughs> my my is She breaks down, begins to sob uncontrollably. This ends up with her curled on the floor. Enter Spurad. He's hesitant to walk up to Amanda, type, taking small steps. His noise is masked by Amanda's sobs. Lost in the 
influence, and a creepy boy keeps telling me he's some sort of supernatural being. I never said I was supernatural. I am as natural as the trees here. You sound like my grandpa. He's been telling me all about Irish magic, and now you're saying the same thing. Maybe it's about time you start taking him seriously. I'm done being a wide-eyed little kid. When the rug's pulled out from under your feet, it hurts, you know? I feel like there's something not right with you. I'm not comfortable talking about this with you. You're a stranger to me, remember? I told you my name. It doesn't matter. You know, I don't know who you are at all. And we're going to close out her play there. But if you want to read her play, which has a really fun ending and interesting, there's some conflict between O'Connor's and Girl. Girls have a gun that's drawn in. Okay, so let's give Gabriella a